I am rarely, if ever, the smartest man in the room. But there were times during the recent FutureWorks event that I felt like the dumbest man in the East of England and quite possibly beyond. And never was I more intellectually outgunned than during my conversation with job site digitisation expert Hoppy from Hexagon Geosystems. It was a conversation that took in site connectivity, the future of humanity and, weirdly, song lyrics. And I will turn to song lyrics in an attempt to describe Hoppy's level of vision and insight. Those of a certain age will recall the song The Hole of the Moon by the Waterboys, which allegedly was written about fellow musician Prince and his ability to picture a wider vision. As the lyrics say, I saw the rain dirty valley, you saw Brigadoon, I saw the crescent, you saw the whole of the moon. Hoppy is one of those rare and precious individuals that sees the whole of the moon, as you're about to hear. Hoppy is actually the guy that introduced me to the term connected worksite. That was probably about two years ago. And here we are at FutureWorks where he's, he's dreaming, his vision is writ large right across this exhibition. Hoppy, you, delighted to have you here. You saw the future, my friend, and, and here it is. I saw the future. I came back. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, this is a great event. You know, I mean, I... Um... I had the opportunity to meet a lot of our customers, 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 our partners. Um, um, it's folks like you. Great event. What originally brought me here is because we're actually asked to present a little bit. And you wanna, you wanna, are you interested in that? You want me to? Go I'd to love that? to. I, yeah. Well, I didn't get to see the. I, I was, I was broadcasting to to this audience. Oh, you, so you were broadcasting to another audience. So, what, what were you actually talking about? So look, I think an increasingly a theme in construction technology is, you know, is it's going to help us not just build more stuff better, but tackle some of the bigger problems, you know, in society, uh, sustainability. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I've been asked to kind of reflect about. And um, so we had a session this morning, good session. Uh, there were a few good other speakers. I think what we highlighted is... Um, Look, the sad truth is, um, you know, and now it's flooding season soon again, right? So, like, uh, you know, prog prognost um, uh, forecast is about 20 million people will lose their homes this year due to flooding. That's in spring. Then you get um, uh, and more in this area. Then you get uh, wildfires. You know, we've seen what happened in the Mediterranean. So, you know, it's it's here. It's happening, right? And and then we also see that the population keeps growing. Not only do they keep growing, but they keep growing in very concentrated places. Most of the population growth will happen in cities. Uh, people get older. Uh, and then not only do we have more people, but each individual also consumes more, right? And so eventually, you know, there is just a need for more infrastructure, right? So, so nobody debates that. Um, now, the, the thing is that the creation of infrastructure... Uh, construction in itself bears an element of destruction, unfortunately, and we can't keep doing this eating our own uh, seed corn. So the question is, how do we crack this, right? How do we crack these future needs of society? And so traditionally, uh, we solve this through our economy, right? And traditional um, economists are obsessed about capital, aggregation of capital, and the uh, division of labor. And so we've seen that's coming to an end, right? I mean, it almost feels like, you know, we spend, um, what's this guy, Carol Lewis, we, the Red Queen's race, you know, you, you seem to run harder and harder just to keep in its place. And uh, so we seem to run harder and harder in construction just to keep functioning what we already have. And, the, and then we have more and more population with more and more needs. And how do we address this? And um, so that was the first part. And then there is luckily a different school of thought other than the traditional economists. And that's the innovation economists. And as the traditional economists uh, are fascinated by capital and labor, innovation economists are fascinated by innovation. And... Um, entrepreneurs 
And so the story here is that innovation, you know, like what we do in Hexagon, has the potential to reconfigure how we do this. And so, and even um, dematerialize things. So you don't need a physical shop anymore. You don't need to be the, a, a physical, you don't need to build a physical shop anymore to go shopping. Actually, you don't need a physical audience anymore to, to broadcast. You don't need a physical fence anymore to keep a construction machine out of certain areas. And so information has a tremendous potential to kind of not just think about differently how we do physical things, but actually maybe not needing some physical things at all. And then, and then the other part of this thought process, I think this is, was very relevant for, for me, meeting a lot of uh, the contractors here, is however great technology has as a potential, it's not going to change an organization. And this is where we need the entrepreneurs, where we need people that build different kind of organization, building different things in the future. So that was our morning. When you, you mentioned the innovation entrepreneurs and that kind of thing, when I think of those, when you, you said we don't need a physical shop, so I immediately think of Amazon and Jeff Bezos, and I think of Elon Musk with the Tesla and everything else. But both of those, despite the fact that they have made huge leaps in technology, both of those, I think, are still very, very focused on capital, aren't they? Yeah, but I think the, the way they create value is possibly better for the environment in some cases than how we traditionally did it in building big factories, you know, that, uh, you know, come at a cost to the environment. Now, I'm not saying that these, these chaps are my ideals, right? Uh, and I still believe, you know, that aggregating money uh, uh, over disproportionately is, is not the best thing for society either. But what it has shown us that we can do things differently, right? And, and so innovation can help us think about how operations, interactions, uh, creation can happen differently than what it has happened in the past. And obviously, you know, we can't continue the way we, we do right now where the cost of infrastructure comes at, uh, at the cost of, uh, um, you know, not creating a better future for the next generation. You know, uh, we had a better one. I think they deserve one as well. Totally agree. <clears throat> obviously, at the basis of all of this, we, we, we are talking here about connectivity. And connectivity seems to have gone through phases. Where are we now with machine to machine connectivity, machine to human connectivity? And I think more importantly, where is that connectivity taking us? Where do you see what will be the theme of Future Works 2027, for example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a very good question. I mean, if we had sat here maybe five years ago in terms of uh, future innovation and technology, you know, telematics would have been like, oh, I think it's going to come, you know? Now you see it everywhere. You know, every contractor now has a very good idea about how much do my machine run idle and how much fuel do they consume by running idle and how can I kind of reduce my footprint by taking this into control. So I think machine connectivity is, is here to stay. But before then, uh, it was actually just connectivity of people. It's like you and me going on the internet and doing our shopping, right? Um, I think from connecting people, then we came to connecting objects. Uh, machines um, and I think you know what is left is connecting um, well mother nature herself and so that's a different technology right you're not going to put chips in every tree or you know uh, uh, every five meter of roads kind of put the sensor um, so the way I think these technologies will unfold is through um, uh, providing visual intelligence um, through laser scanning, uh, laser scanning or LIDARs or radars or some of those technologies that then allow you to um, monitor um, changes in the environment, in the physical environment at large scale uh, to the point you then, because you can document those, you can analyze those, and then you can, you can correlate that in terms of, you know, something happening here. And the extreme case is, you know, which storm was caused in Europe by 
witch butterfly waving her wings in the Amazon forest. But if you have all of this technology available to map things and large scale uh, change in the environment, then you can start modeling, you can start analyzing, and you can start of a different way in terms of how we interact with nature. And that's obviously different than a digital twin of a machine, right? Now we talk about digital twins of bridges, roads, but even glaciers or mountains or forests, rivers, oceans. Uh, that's, I think, where we, where we see this going a little bit. And today it's very, very expensive, right? You have to fly with planes. But I think tomorrow, you know, we're going to be able to do this at a significantly lower cost, which allows us to capture and analyze a lot more data and understand, you know, how we actually interact with the environment. In the nicest possible way, you seem to operate on a completely different plane to virtually everybody I speak to. You, uh, you, you, you are you are the first person that actually deserves the term thought leader. Do you do you li do you live that? You know, in my head, your house where you live is is a lot like the lair of a Bond villain. It's in an underground lair and it's all lit in in, in pale blue light and everything is touch screen. And do do you live and breathe this, or or do you just? stop the day job and go home and, and live a fairly rural life? No, I, I, I like to think of myself having a fairly normal life, you know. Um, thinking comes at the cost of maybe um, uh, a lot more cleanup I should maybe do. So there is an element of, you know, why do you have all of this stuff all over your office all the time, Hoppy? But um, no, I think today it's really easy. It's become really easy, like through channels like yours, to, to get access to information, right? So you just then need to kind of figure out, you know, how do I connect all of this? And in our case, um, uh, look, we have a lot of um, inventions that sit on the shelf where we don't always have a use case, right? It's like, you know, what, what's the problem we got to solve with that one, right? And um, we have lots of data where we actually, until you start mining and looking, we don't actually know what it tells us. And um, so you have this explorative element in, in this business. And um, and then we have a lot of people that ask a lot of questions. And then sometimes you just keep thinking, you know. But uh, no, I wouldn't consider myself a thought leader. Um, what I'd like to think of myself is somebody who triggers thoughts, you know, in other people. It doesn't help if I think all day long. I think we, we all can think about how do I create an organization that is better fit um, for the future, right? How can I do things so they have less of a, of a footprint? You know, how can I organize work so it's more appealing to my employees? You know, everybody talks about skills, skill shortage in terms of people they don't have, but they also have to think about the people they already do have, you know? And how do I they make their job more interesting? And how do I give them the information so they're empowered to make decisions? Um, you know, there's something really nice if you know, like you, if you have all the elements in your hands, to decide what you do next, it's, it's very fulfilling in a, in a job. Right? And I think we are increasingly available to do this, not just for an individual, but for entire teams working on the same piece of paper or the same digital connected construction site simultaneously. Like It's like a multiplayer game online. You know? So, um, yeah, I think everybody should have these thoughts. And everybody uh, hopefully has similar um, influences that I get, you know. But no, at home, we, we, we don't, we eat normal food, we have normal conversations. So it's not one no. tablet for your entire day? No, 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 and we don't float through the corridors. <laughs> it's, it's a fairly normal life in my family. You, you've mentioned the idea of, of this next generation of entrepreneurs that are not putting capital gain at the heart of everything, but possibly the greater good of the planet, be it environmentally or sustainability-wise. Where are they going to come from? And I guess moreover than that, are, are we as a society ready for that? Somebody that's going to put the, the planet ahead of capital? Um, so it's a... It's a... You know, I'm also a victim of my generation, right? So we, we are probably overly materialistic. We like experiences, you know, like a good dinners and holidays. And uh, so these values change. My, my children, they don't, they don't even want a car. You know, I, could you imagine life without wanting a car when you were 18? You don't want one. You know, so 
I think, you know, there is an opportunity that people value things differently, not just economically, but maybe socially and maybe environmentally. And I think that's needs to change, right? And then out of this, people will get satisfaction out of doing other things, um, motivation out of doing other things, and um, just change the way the way we operate. So I, I see a lot of young talent now um, approach us with... Uh, we have gamers. People, we hire people that literally like gaming because living... A digital reality, operating in a digital reality, um, manipulating in a digital reality, teamwork in a digital... It sounds strange, but that's kind of normal if you're a multiplayer gamer. So they have kind of skills that you and I don't have. And so now, you know, maybe some of these are transferable into creating a metaverse of a construction site. And yes, there will be. There will. I think there will be plenty of opportunities. I'd love to be young again. Um, we all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think there's opportunity, and it's just that like, you know it only takes like one really good idea that can change, that can ripple all the way through. I'm I'm going to quote. I'm going to, I'm going to try and quote this in a second. There is a, a lyric in a, a song by Frankie Goes to Hollywood way back when, mm-hmm. and the the lyric is in the coming age of automation where. It, uh, people eventually might work just 10 or 20 hours a week. Man, for the first time, will be forced to confront himself with the true spiritual problems of living. Given the fact that we are on the cusp of automation and AI and um, remote working and all that kind of thing, I come from a, a generation that has defined itself by what it does for a living. If you haven't got that, that definition and you haven't got that structure, what do people of the future do? I'm sorry to bore you with Frankie Goes to Hollywood. No, no, no. There's another Frankie Hollywood uh, thing that I always quote, and he goes, and everything has a place and has a place of, for everything. And if working in geosystems, that's kind of, sure. uh, you know, we love that. But um, I, I had a good conversation the other day with, with somebody like my age, and they were like, look, our parents had like one company, one job, one career. And then I'm already like more like one career, multiple companies. And I think that next generation will actually be able to have multiple careers, you know, and they don't define themselves anymore in terms of, you know, hey, this is Joe, the plumber, you know, because I'm identified by being a plumber, you know, I'm just Joe you know, or Jane. You know? And so um, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what the people of the future, what they will do, but I think, um, um, I think I think there is a given this overall connectivity and everybody realizes there's impossible these days to do something without externalities and spillover somewhere else. And everybody theoretically can see immediately what happens somewhere else. I think that common yeah, we are in this together might have a revival. You know, I think we've been through a period now of Lots of individuality, personal wealth creation, personal fulfillment. I think we come to an edge now where we realize, look, we can't do this as a, as by destroying the environment or making other people's life miserable. And and and, I, and I'm very hopeful that that next generation will kind of you know to a degree reverse the trend because I think some of the baby boomers or even our grandparents. That you know, we like being together is is was more common maybe than what it is today. I'm going to let you get let you get back to the day job in just a second. But one final question that that is, has occurred to me while you were talking about this: we talk about connectivity, but to my mind, that connectivity at the moment seems to be in silos. So we in construction tend to talk about construction talking to construction, but the construction needs to talk to infrastructure. Infrastructure needs to talk to government. Government needs to. We need to, to take away those silos, don't we? I agree with you. And and it's um there are several ways to this, you know, we let the market decide, you know. Um we wait for government regulation. Um we um we make this more of a topic, right? So so um but it's very disjointed today and this lack of integration and interoperability and uh, also some of these 
uh, these locked in effects in terms of you know you change this little thing but you got to change everything else because it's just it's so proprietary um i think uh, this this whole idea about open systems that communicate um is um is is a needed debate you know but i I've, i see some very good people in all layers of decision making in in the industry in government and in in universities and research all tackling this this from various angles and i'm uh, fairly confident that eventually we'll end up with something that's going to work in this digital world just as well as it does in the real world most of the time that kind of triggers my final question for the day given the fact that you do <clears throat> excuse me you do tend to scan the horizon for the future are you hopeful for the future oh yeah i think the future is going to be fantastic i i really think you know i think there's so many things we'll be able to kind of solve in that digital reality world before we need to change our environment and before we need to start putting things together and ripping them apart. And I think there is so many more things we can just solve, you know, in, in this digital world, you know, some things just work better in Excel. <laughs> and, and so I think uh, we're going to crack a lot of things because by, by looking at the world through these angles, you know, we're going to see, it's just going to give us a very new perspective and we're going to understand things that we currently don't understand. And we can simulate the impacts before we do harm to anything. Uh, we can make things more efficient without going through thousands of trials and errors. Um, and I think it's going to be a, like a very creative future too. You know? So no, I am, I am extremely, I'm extremely positive. I'm extremely, I think it's, I think it's, Obviously, this, this comes at a time where we've just been in a pandemic. You know, there's a war raging, you know, and, and you know, everybody's just like, well, you know, what's, what's going to come next, right? Um, on the other hand, we all realized how great it is to be among people again, to be in a conference, and no, no, I'm, I'm very positive. I'm very positive. Well, I've already quoted one song lyric. I'm going to finish with another one. Given the fact that we have had a pandemic, given the fact that we are in the situation of a war, Things can only get better, can't they? Yes, things can only get better.